Okay, SummerSlam 2021 is in the books, and ooh, boy. Uh, this was a... It wasn't a bad show, but it was a real mixed bag of a show, and we'll get right into it. Uh, we did have a kickoff show match that wasn't announced until, I believe, the kickoff show itself, or maybe just before. It is Baron Corbin versus Big E. Uh, they don't state if there's a stipulation involving the purloin money in the bank briefcase that's been going on in the last couple of weeks, but it, it basically was. They just, yeah, they basically said it was without adding any sort of official stipulation. Uh, right off the bat, it appeared Logan Paul was in the crowd right behind McAfee and Cole. Uh, McAfee even acknowledged it. Uh, Corbin refused to hand over the briefcase to start things off. Big E came back into a couple of big belly to belly suplexes. Uh, Corbin dodged an apron splash, allowed him to rally back. He tossed Big E into the ring post three times. Big E rolled out of a choke slam and into kind of a submission. Uh, Corbin then basically rolled out of the ring and tried to leave with the briefcase once again, but uh, Big E speared him through the ring, hit the big ending, got the three count, and Logan Paul was happy. So, uh, yeah, typical kickoff show match. Uh, don't know where they're going with it. I, the whole broke Baron Corbin thing is confusing to me because at one point I was supposed to get him over as like this baby face because he was this put upon lackey, but then he pulls this crap and it's like, yeah, I don't know where they're going with this exactly. Like, I, I know the King Corbin shtick got old, but at least that worked to an extent. So, I mean, and Corbin's capable of playing a good heel. Just, just let him do that. Anyway, moving on to the show proper, we opened up with the Raw Tag Team Championship match. AJ Styles and Omos versus RK Bro, a.k.a. Randy Orton and Matt Riddle. Uh, Styles and Orton opened right up. Orton uh, hit a suplex and stomped on Styles' hand. And then uh, Omos kind of got into the ring and uh, Orton tagged Riddle in. And o Omos just slammed him a couple of times. Uh, Oma, uh, Riddle did fight out and try to get a rear naked choke attempt on, but uh, Omos fought out of it. Riddle eventually did come back in a big jumping knee to Omos. Uh, Orton got the hot tag and hit Styles with a big snap power slam. Uh, at this point, Omos choked Riddle on the ring apron, but Riddle managed to revive just enough to shove Omos into the ring post. Uh, Styles then hit a moonsault into a death drop DDT to the outside of the ring on Riddle. But that enabled Orton to eventually catch Styles the RKO for the three count of the victory. So you have new Raw Tag Team Champions. Uh, this match it was pretty good. Um, it was limited. I think it was a lot quicker than I thought it was going to be. But yeah, I think they managed to tell a really good story in a really short amount of time. And uh, did it with a lot of real high action and some great spots. So yeah, overall that was actually a pretty good match to start the show off. Or well, the show proper to be more precise. Okay, our next match is Alexa Bliss with Lily versus Eva Marie with Dewdrop, not Piper Niven. Um, anyway, uh, Bliss set Lily up in the corner. Bliss dodged a clothesline. line. Eva Marie basically kind of fell out of the ring when she did the uh, uh, Eva, Marie, Eva Marie eventually got to Lily, started slapping her around. Uh, basically, uh, what did I break oh, carried uh, Lily around, the Lily doll around the ring. Uh, Bliss just leapt on Eva Marie and attacked her. Eva Marie fought, uh, as Bliss started setting Lily back up in the corner, uh, uh, I keep wanting to call her Piper Niven, but Dewdrop kept telling Eva to go after her, but Eva rather told, Eva would rather told, uh, I keep calling her Piper, sorry, uh, Dewdrop to go after her, but Dewdrop wasn't having any of it, and that enabled Alexa Bliss to come back again. Um, Marie did judge a twisted Bliss attempt. Uh, Maria tried to play to the card again and got a DD, Bliss got a DDT uh, for the three count and the victory. And yeah, that was basically it. Uh, and then afterwards, Dewdrop walked away, uh, got, grabbed the mic and announced Eva Maria is the loser, and then grabbed Eva Maria's entrance robe and left. Okay, so <laughs> that was it. Uh, um, Moving on to our next match, it's the United States Championship match. Sheamus versus Damian Priest. Uh, opening up Priest at a corkscrew elbow. He had a big springboard plancha, and uh, I don't know if they didn't stage this right at all, because Priest's head hit the concrete really hard, his hip hit the concrete really hard, and his heel hit Sheamus like right in the middle of the forehead, right where his mat, right where the, the protective mask Sheamus has been wearing for his broken nose was. Uh, Sheamus dodged a roundhouse and threw Priest in the ring post a couple of times. Uh, Sheamus then hit an Irish Crest backbreakers. 
Priest came back with a swinging DDT. Uh, Priest hit the uh, super, no, a spin kick off the top rope. Uh, Sheamus fought back. He countered a top rope choke slam into a sort of a stun gun type maneuver. He then hit a flying clothesline and then went for the broke kick. But Priest countered that and hit a choke slam. Sheamus uh, locked on a heel hook, but Priest fought back, ripped off Sheamus' mask, and that disoriented him enough for Priest to hit the reckoning for the three count on the victory to become the new United States champion. Uh, so it's a good thing. It's nice to see Priest win a championship again. I, I am kind of surprised Mrs. Morrison did get involved in this because, you know, even though this was building up to the uh, priest Sheamus match, he's been facing Mrs. Morrison the last few weeks, so you'd think they would have gotten involved. But, nope, thankfully, uh, hopefully everything's moved on now. We can start doing something else with everyone. And, again, it's nice to see the United States Championship on someone young, well, Someone new and up and coming in WWE, you know, instead of an established star. Like, you know, Sheamus has had his run. I don't think he needs another singles championship run. So let's just, you know, do some new things, okay? Okay, our next match is a SmackDown Tag Team Championship match the Usos versus the Mysterios. Um, right, off his bet, right off the bat, Jimmy did his best to avoid a 619 from Ray. Dominic hit a big crossbody to the outside of the ring on both of the Usos. Uh, Jay blind tagged and got into the match to break up uh, an attempted uh, 619 from Dominic. Uh, the Usos hit a um, axe handle backbreaker on Dominic. They really isolated Com uh, Dominic at one point. Jay had a really massive clothesline that just completely staggered the kid. Uh, Dominic came back, hit a suplex, and managed to tag in Ray. Uh, Jimmy hit a super kick that distracted on Ray that just after, well, the, sorry, but what did I write here, Jimmy, from distraction, okay, Jimmy hit a super kick on Ray after distraction from Jay, I wrote Jimmy's name twice there, uh, Ray then dodged a splash, he had a 619, but then uh, Jimmy blocked the frog splash attempt, and then the Usos hit a double super kick, and the Uso splash for the three count in the victory, so they retain, uh, this was another really good match, a good high energy match, this was a little bit longer than the Raw Tag Team match, but I think this one did, again, another job, good job telling a story. Um, didn't quite get a lot with the whole seeds of doubt that we've been planting in Dominic for the last few weeks, but again, maybe this allows that to carry on a little further. Uh, like I said, the Usos look dominant, and this helps make uh, the Bloodline faction look a little bit stronger as uh, time goes on here, So, uh, which we'll get to later when we get to that match. So, again, like I think this is a really good job of setting things up. And that leads us to our next match, which was supposed to be the SmackDown Women's Championship match between Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks. Uh, this match was on, then it was off, and then it was on again, and then they announced it was off again. For some reason, Sasha Banks was unable to compete. Uh, I don't think it's COVID, because she was on SmackDown last night. Uh, it, yeah, that was the... It, 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 it sort of indicated that maybe one or both of the women may have gotten sick, but then, no, they were both cleared, and then it was back on, and then it was off again. So, yeah, I don't know what exactly happened there. However, a replacement for Sasha Banks was announced. It's Carmella. Carmella enters the ring. You know, Bianca gets on the mic. She says, look, you know, I've beaten you before. I am really, really wanted to face Sasha again. I'm angry, I'm going to be taking out all my anger on you, sorry. And then as that happens, Becky Lynch's music hits. And Becky Lynch is back. She comes down to the ring. She tosses Carmella out, tosses her into the ring steps, skips back in and says, hey, you want to have a match for that championship? Bianca says yes. Becky hits the manhandle slam and after 26 seconds is the new SmackDown Women's Champion. Yep, they somehow managed to find the one way to ruin the idea of Becky Lynch returning because, like, the crowd was ecstatic, they were going crazy, they were loving it, the match started, and then they kind of, they just started booing. And there's a lot of people angry on social media, there's a lot, I mean, just, yeah, this was not the way to do that. You have Becky Lynch come back to challenge a heel, you don't have him come back have her come back to challenge a popular babyface champion, which now it looks like they're probably planting the seeds for a Bianca Belair heel turn. It just, oh, 
boy, that was a dud to miss Q on. Like, you could have had a really good match here. I mean, the problem is, too, we also had had a lot of filler in between this. I'm not joking. We had about a half. This whole thing led to basically half an hour of filler. We had, because in between this, we had this segment where Rick Boogs introduced Shinsuke Nakamura because he just won the Intercontinental Championship. And then that was just it. Like, he just played the ring entrance and, you know, McAfee got on the table again and it just, oh, it just fell apart so, so bad. It was just, again, oh, it just fell, again. And then afterwards, we got another, you know, long filler segment with uh, Gable Stevenson and the woman who won the women's wrestling competition in the Olympics. And, you know, that's great for them. I'm not poo-pooing anything what they accomplished. They deserve all the credit. But, no, we just had filler, and now you're giving us even more filler. Oh, just... And then, you know, not only that, they did it after that match, again, after burying Bianca Belair. Again, the person you were pushing as the new face of the women's division for pretty much half the year now, and now that's dead. You killed it. Good job. <sighs> Our next match is Drew McIntyre versus Jinder Mahal. Um, right off the bat, uh, McIntyre threw Mahal into the corner a couple of times, had a bunch of suplexes. Went for a Claymore, but Mahal rolled out of the ring. He came back, he had a big sidekick, but then McIntyre followed that up with a big superplex, and he eventually hit the Claymore for the three count of the victory. So, yeah, that was pointless. Again, you start building up Jinder Mahal as a credible threat, and nope, you know, done for in about five minutes. So, yeah, this show really started to take a downturn, didn't it? Uh, like, I was praising most of the matches except for that Eva Marie Alexa Bliss thing, but still, this just, this started to fall apart real fast. <sighs> and that leads us into our next match, the Raw Women's Championship Triple Threat Match, Nikki Ash versus Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley. Uh, right off the bat, Charlotte Flair, you know, told Nikki to get out of the ring. Uh, Nikki kind of coming back, hit Charlotte with a monkey flip, and then uh, get a, sort of an elevated drop toe hold. Instead of tripping her at the ankle, tripped uh, Rhea Ripley up more around the knee. That was kind of a unique maneuver there. Uh, Charlotte threw Nikki into Ripley and followed that up with an exploder suplex. Nikki countered Riptide into a head scissors. Uh, Ripley came back, hit a Northern Lights suplex, hit a German suplex fallaway slam. Con uh, I believe uh, Charlotte had Nikki in a uh, follow a slam position, and then uh, Ripley hit a German suplex on Charlotte. So that's kind of how that worked out. Um, Charlotte came back, hit a double suplex, or countered a double suplex attempt into DDTs, then hit a moonsault to the outside of the ring, and uh, did not, I don't, this was another one that was not staged very well at all, because she hit the maneuver, and back of Nikki's head just cracked right into the barricade, just really hard, and you could tell she was kind of out of it for a couple seconds. Uh, Nikki came back, hit a, um, uh, wait, what did I hit? Poor Scrake. Uh, she hit a maneuver on Charlotte. Uh, Charlotte, uh, went for the figure eight on Rhea Ripley. Nikki blocked it and hit a senton. Uh, uh, Nikki then hit her fisherman's neck breaker on Charlotte, went for the crossbody. Uh, Charlotte dodged it and uh, locked Nikki in the figure eight. Nikki tapped out, so Charlotte's Raw Women's Champion again. And again, another new face that could have helped elevate the women's division a little bit gets quashed. Like, I know the initial buzz around the Nikki almost superhero gimmick uh, wore off real quick, but still, it's just kind of cruel to give her that championship and then take it away so quickly. It just, it doesn't feel right to do that. Uh, it's just... Again, maybe you could have built something. Maybe you could have had her kind of start turning heelish too. You know, go from almost a superhero to almost a supervillain. I don't know, it would have been new, would have been different, but nope, that just kind of fell apart. And that leads us into our next match, Edge versus Seth Rollins. Uh, again, Edge got to come out to the brood theme, he came out through the Ring of Fire, uh, then kind of blended into the Alter Bridge music. So yeah, it was really cool. Uh, Edge closed line Rollins over the top rope, Rollins almost immediately began to get frustrated. He started attacking the back of Edge's neck. He went for a pedigree. Um, once Edge blocked it, he rolled, Rollins rolled out of the ring again. Eventually, Rollins managed to toss Edge's head into the sidesteps, cracked him off the 
Cracked him off the steps a couple of times, and then uh, Rollins had a flying knee to the side of Edge's head. Uh, Edge fought out of a neck breaker and hit a big flapjack. Edge hit a top rope swinging neck breaker. Edge hit the implant DDT. Edge blocked a super kick into the edge of Manic. Uh, Rollins hit the superplex falcon arrow cam a combo. Edge uh, countered a stomp attempt into the glam slam. That's his uh, wife, Beth Phoenix's finisher, so that was kind of cool. Uh, Edge dodged an apron stomp and sent Rollins through the or speared Rollins through the ropes. Uh, Edge then uh, hit a bulldog headlock, sending Rollins into the LED board on the side of the ring. Uh, Rollins managed to come back and counter a spear into a pedigree. Uh, he then went for a Phoenix splash, but Edge dodged that, hit the spear, only got a two count. Rollins uh, hit, let's see, three, oh, uh, hit st three blows to the back of Edge's head. I think it was a couple forearm blows and then another kick to the back of Edge's neck. So, yeah, the whole motif for this match was uh, Rollins going after Edge's surgically repaired neck. Uh, Edge fought out of that, locked on the Educator, that's his uh, Cloverleaf finisher. But then uh, when Rollins tried to get that into a roll-up, Edge modified it into a cross face and Rollins eventually tapped out. Uh, this was a great match, and yeah, this really did kind of save the show. This really, really did, because, uh, you know, the crowd was reasonably hot right up until those women's matches, and then it fell apart. And this really did help pick them back up again, so, uh, that was really good and really cool. So, yeah, again, thank goodness for them, because they really helped make this show a tiny bit more watchable and a tiny bit more enjoyable. Um... At least, like I said, they did really kind of save the show a little bit there. And that leads us into our next match, which is the WWE Championship match, Bobby Lashley versus Goldberg. Uh, Goldberg uh, shrugged off a shoulder block from Lashley and hit a flying shoulder block. He then hit a couple body slams. Uh, at one point, uh, Lashley fought back, went for a jackhammer, but Goldberg blocked it and kind of tweaked his knee a little bit. Yes, this will pay off. Uh, Lashley had a flatliner. Goldberg threw Lashley outside the ring. Uh, speared Lashley on the outside of the ring. Uh, tried to set up Lashley for another spear, but then MVP cracked Goldberg in his injured knee with a cane. And then uh, Lashley speared Goldberg in the knee, then rammed Goldberg's knee into the ring post several times. Uh, at that point, the ref just called for the match because he, he realized Goldberg could not continue. Uh, Lashley then attacked Goldberg's knee with a chair. And then Gage Goldberg got in the ring and got put in the hurt lock. And when that happened, MVP had to call Lashley off. And, you know, Goldberg realized what had happened. He was super pissed. And Lashley, uh, MVP got on the microphone and said, Look, we didn't know that was your kid. We're sorry. It's just, he, he ran in the ring. You, just, What happens with it? You do stuff like that. And, yeah. So, uh, again, it was... You know, match was a little. I think went a little too long for its own good, and now it seems to be hinting that it's not yet over. So, uh, yeah, again, not a terrible match in the strictest sense of the term. But again, this should have been the end of the story, and now it looks like no, it's only part of the chapter, and it's not exactly an exciting part. Yeah, sorry, there's a plane going overhead, so you might hear that in the background. And that leads us into our main event, the Universal Championship match, Roman Reigns versus John Cena. Um, right off the bat, Cena's idea for this match was to try to get Reigns into a pain predicament as much as he could. So a lot of quick roll-ups right off the bat, a lot of cradle attempts. Uh, Reigns managed to fire out one and punches Cena and Lant. Started playing to the crowd, which again played more into Cena trying to get the quick roll-up. Uh, Reigns hit a suplex and then locked on a sleeper hold. Reigns blocked another uh, cradle attempt and then s tossed uh, Cena into the ring steps. Uh, however, he got a little cocky again. Cena did catch him in the cradle, but Cena fought out. He went to the AA, but Reigns countered that into a DDT. Reigns then uh, began apologizing into the camera to Cena's mother for beating up her son. Cena countered a spear with a kick. He hit the AA, but Reigns kicked out. Uh, Reigns countered another Cena. Cena attacked into a drive-by dropkick, but then Cena came back, hit the AA on the announce table, only got a two-count again on that. Cena hit the Avalanche AA and only got a two-count on that. Uh, Reigns eventually came back, hit a big Superman punch, he hit another spear for the three-count of the victory. So, 
Yeah, again, this was a, a, a darn good match. Again, you know, both these men are capable of doing that, so it's not too terrible that that happened. Again, uh, Reigns stood over Cena, and then Brock Lesnar's music hits. I've said it before, I no longer care about Brock Lesnar. Lesnar stared down Reigns. Heyman looked really, really worried as he and Reigns then kind of slinked to the back. And that was all. <laughs> and that's really how it ended. Uh, I just read a report during one of those little break periods that uh, got edited out. But, uh, yeah, that apparently uh, Lesnar came in and hit a couple big suplexes on Cena afterwards. So I guess people went home happy. Like I said, I'm I'm done with Brock Brock Lesnar and uh, ooh, um, like I said, there were good matches on the show. I think the the two tag matches were really good. Uh, you know, uh, Edge Rollins was good. Uh, obviously, Bliss. Pretty much all of the women's matches were disappointments. I mean, I don't think anyone was really hyped for Bliss Eva Marie, but still. Uh, you, you can always you, you can always surprise people. You never know. Um, I'm trying to think of those something. Uh, the United States Championship match was pretty good. Like I said, there were good points during this show, but there was way too much filler. Like there was another one I didn't talk about with involved Miz and Morrison and their uh, dripstick and or the super dripstick and Xavier Woods taking it. Yeah, it didn't do anything. And, I mean, all he did was play Scott Hall for an NWO parody, but again, when there's only one guy, it's not really that impressive. And, uh, again, played too, too much filler. Uh, the show was way too padded out. Again, the Lashley-Goldberg match was a little too long. Again, sorry, there's another plane going over. Uh, yeah, again, the women's matches were just all disappointments in so many ways. Uh, you know, Took, uh, you know, kind of killed so much momentum. Uh, McIntyre and Mahal was nothing. It just, again, the good matches, unfortunately, just it could not completely outweigh the bad. Uh, and, again, Brock Lesnar being back. And, again, the idea that we're going to get more Lashley Goldberg just doesn't sit well with me at all. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to give SummerSlam 2021 a D. I just, yeah, it's that much of a disappointment. I don't think it would go all the way into failing, but I couldn't go up to a C. Uh, I think it was a, it was an average right up until just that last bit, I think, and then again it kind of went back down. Okay, so the next video is going to be the recap and review for NXT TakeOver 36, excuse me. And then uh, it'll be the Candyman review, and then the Random Trade review on Bone Volume 1. See you all next time. Hey guys, remember to check out my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash sleepy time for cat productions where you can help me expand my wrestling coverage to stuff beyond WWE, NXT, and the occasional AEW free show.